You know, Tony, every house over a course of time becomes outdated. Oh, no question, unless it's updated, (laughs) right? You make a good point. But it's funny because you and I have been on this earth a while. We've seen some stuff, right? We've been been in the building material supply industry that whole time. So it's the things that you see, right? If If you're the captain of a ship, then what you see is... You see propellers and rudders and those kinds of things, but you and I, building material supply guys, we see building material supplies. That's right. We see trends. Yeah, we see trends. Housing trends. I mean, uh, a lot of the a lot of the things that I remember seeing on homes twenty years ago or thirty years ago, um, <laughs> unfortunately, are still out there in some in some cases. Absolutely. There are there are things that have gone out of style and have come back into style, like uh, brass. You know, I've got brass on my list, but when you look at some of the newer trends that you're seeing now, brushed brass is coming back. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, brushed. I mean, it seems like it comes back in in some other sort of way like right right, right. like you know you would see bright brass before and then uh it kind of came back something that looks similar to what they call it rose gold gold. yes yeah rose gold um you know chrome was popular and then it was brushed chrome and then nickel was popular and then it was brushed nickel yeah um kind of weird oil rubbed bronze was popular for a minute and it was because it was really dark and then they just decided let's just come out with black yeah black matte black I think matte black looks pretty cool. I think matte black is pretty popular right now. It is. Very popular right now. Matte is uh, cool. I actually saw somebody the other day with their fingernails painted matte black. Really? Yeah, they they had gone to the to the fingernail store <laughs> and got their fingernails painted matte black and it looked pretty cool. Don't they call that a uh what they call that? A salon. A salon? A salon. I think it's a nail salon. A manicure. Okay. Called a manicure. Sure. Yeah. And that's for your flanges. That's right. And then a pedicure. Right. For your for other your feet, flanges. Right? Yeah. For your toesies. Mm-hmm. Your tootsies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt Black. Yeah. So you're right. Um, there, are a, there are a lot of things out there that have been done a long time ago that have gone out of style and they come back, but they come back always a little different. Absolutely. You know, like bell bottom jeans. Do you know bell bottom jeans were very popular in the 70s? Of course. And then they went away. They came back in the 90s. They came back as boot cut. Yeah, in the 90s. Yeah. yeah, Boot cut. But they were like, well, they're not bell bottoms. Now they're boot cut. Boot cut, right? For Westerners, for cowboys. And now they're kind of back. Like the whole mom jean thing is back, I think is weird. I think now they're not just bell bottoms, they're just bell jeans. Like they're wide, like ginormous. All the way up. All the way up to the top. <laughs> you know? So um there's style is uh style is a finicky fella. Yeah. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna give you top ten things, the probably the most common things, and then one of these will surprise you. But we're gonna give you the top ten things of outdated design trends that still seem to rear their ugly heads a hundred percent right i mean you you know what? i'm actually we have top 10 but i'm gonna throw one more in there oh 11 i'm gonna throw one i'm gonna throw 11 all right what it, wait 11 is gonna be the first one it's gonna be controversial you know let's start yeah let's start with it because i don't want to type it down okay start with number 11 one of the outdated design trends one of the outdated design trends that i see personally in a lot of the luxury houses that I'm visiting is no more orange peel. Whoa. Orange peel wall texture, which we have on our walls right here. Right. You're saying that orange peel is out. Is out. And smooth wall is in. Smooth wall. Yep. And level five smooth. There you go. And it's not just smooth. You don't just say, I want my walls to be smooth. It's level five smooth wall. Yeah. They have to... There are several steps. They're basically skim coating the entire wall and sanding the entire wall. And it I tell you what, it looks amazing. The house I grew up in had smooth walls. Right, but nobody not, used texture but back not then. Not level five smooth walls. Well, I mean, for at that it was lath and plaster. So the whole wall was plastered right. and sanded smooth. 
But all the houses around me when I grew up were all that way. You know, lath and plaster and smooth. It just looked super, super nice. Yeah. And honestly, the only reason, if you talk to the old timers, they'll say the only reason that people ever, that orange peel was ever a thing is because it hides imperfections. That's why. Right. That's that's what I've also heard. That, so that you have thing. drywall, you have a, a drywall industry for production houses that people come in, they slap the drywall up, and then they spray the whole thing down to hide all the wavy walls and imperfections. Yeah. So, And it works really good because people love it. Yeah, but it's going away. It really is. I've seen not only less orange peel, but I've seen other wall textures. I have several builders that just that apply wall texture, but it's different. It's not orange peel. Well, yeah, I've I've definitely seen a plethora of different ways that ceilings and walls both are textured and not orange peel. Yeah. But smooth wall, level five smooth wall. Oh, that's amazing. Is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It takes talent too, because what a lot of these guys are doing is they're going in and planing down walls. So you'll have every stud, you know, you build a house out of lumber. Every stud is not the same. So they got to go in there and plane it down. And then they use uh, little pieces of cardboard and they build it up and they make sure it's a completely flat. They run levels across it before they even put the sheetrock up. And then they put the sheetrock up, make sure it's perfectly flat. And then skim coat the whole thing. Wow! With several coats in there, it's a it's an art form. Yeah, it sounds like it. I'll tell you, um, I I had some sheetrock work done in my house, and we had. I'll tell you what, Corey, um, I did a little remodel at my house, and and I made a boo boo. I had the floor, the flooring, and the decking off upstairs in the bathroom upstairs, and I was walking around on the joist edges. And as I was working up there, uh, my foot slipped off onto the sheetrock uh, that was the ceiling in the downstairs bathroom. Oh. When I went downstairs into the downstairs bathroom and I saw that I had stepped down, I didn't, my foot didn't go through it, but it left a big crack. And so uh, when the sheetrockers came to do the finished sheetrock in the, in the master bedroom, I asked them if they could take a look at that downstairs. And he says, oh yes, I, I can, I can fix that. No problem. And I was thinking, yeah, you could probably just touch it up a little and, you know, retexture it, maybe a little caulk. No, he skim coated the entire ceiling back to smooth and then retextured it. Wow. Yeah. That's a, that was a five by nine room. And probably just a lot easier to do that. Skim than the- coated the entire ceiling and retextured it. And it's perfect. Wow. Yeah. But um, that's impressive. I'm sure I paid a pretty penny for that one. So I just thought of another one. Sorry. Now we're at 12. Okay. This will be number 12. Base molding. Base molding? Yeah. Well, we still have base molding. I know. And I'm not saying this is controversial. I'm not saying it's out of style, but it's one of those trends that, or one of the trends that I'm seeing now is no trim around doors and then no base trim. They actually take sheetrock down and then they put a little gap about four to six inches from the floor, like a half inch wide gap that's made using channel. And it's like a, it's kind of a contemporary thing. Okay. Modern. Looks like a base trim. Kind of, but it's flush with the wall. Interesting. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I've seen the same thing for around doors and windows. They so don't put any like protruding trim. If there's no trim, they 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 are installing the doors and then finishing the sheetrock to the edge of the door jam? Yeah. Yeah. That it's is, like this whole thing. I'll pull up some pictures. It's very for you. interesting. That it looks interests me a lot. It sounds weird, but it looks super clean and it looks super cool. And they use this special channel that goes around and then the, on the edges of the sheetrock. And I think it looks really yeah, cool. That is interesting. I, I'd like to see that. I haven't seen anything like that. Anyway, let's move on to the old the old diehards. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna add one too. Do it. Wicker furniture. <laughs> yeah. Wicker furniture. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that is uh, 
it 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 reminds me of something very beachy wicker furniture maybe something that you would see um on a patio in hawaii or something <laughs> wicker i was just furniture. in hawaii and i didn't see any but wicker there furniture. used to be a lot of wicker furniture around yeah you know it actually made a comeback recently in the last couple of years where it was very popular to take that old wicker furniture prime it and paint it white interesting so, interesting i still thought it was ugly it was just white. And it, it it was ugly white, but now it matched more closely to your white whitewashed oak furniture? I guess. <laughs> it was kind of like one of the, it was just one of those things. It was a new trend. Yeah, whitewashed oak is another one. We had a uh, Bye-bye. At our, you know, family beach house, we uh we remodeled recently. Got the last couple of years mm-hmm. and it was full of wicker furniture. And we just wanted to get rid of it. And then my wife's uncle's daughter was like, no, 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 you got to take that. We could sell it. And she sold it for like a pretty penny. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because we had a headboard and a footboard and a dresser and a couple other pieces like in two different bedrooms. I knew it. See, it's beachy. Yeah. It's a beachy thing. People that have beach homes uh, gravitated to it. But they they swooped it up, man. We had people begging to hold it. They came and got it. And they, Interesting. I mean, we sold it for... Pretty fair amount of money. Very interesting. What else you got? All right. The, you know, the first one on the list, you know, we talked about uh, the new ones that we just added, but the very first one on my list was popcorn ceilings. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's oh, yeah. one of those things. If you're not going to have smooth wall or textured wall and popcorn ceilings, you can you can remove the popcorn ceilings. Yes, absolutely. You know, so a lot of people they have that com- combination of orange peel and popcorn from the seventies. You know, I I don't even know when they stopped really doing popcorn, uh, but one of probably the one of the most popular ones was knockdown, where they would put spatter it up there and then hit it with a knife, right? You know, and kind of knock it down, right? Knockdown is what I have in in my house. That's yes, in my Adair home, that's very common. Yeah, very common. But before that, it was popcorn. But there's actually a pretty easy way to get rid of that. You just take a spray bottle of water, you spray it down, and you just take a regular scraper and then just scrape it right. It falls right off. Like a long-handled tool with a flat blade on it, like a spade? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's not terribly hard. But I would tell you, I had a friend who did this, take plastic and cover the entire floor with plastic because it's going to turn everything white yep and it'll make super clean easy cleanup but it looked great when he was done he just primed it and painted it a little bit of sanding is there a disclaimer here if you're thinking about removing a, a popcorn, popcorn from the ceiling i guess it depends on how old your house is maybe it would be worth getting it tested for asbestos be pretty old probably yeah i, I don't i don't think a majority of the popcorn ceilings are asbestos but i don't quote me. i don't know I mean, yeah, it would be if it were the thing, it would be pretty old. But if you're if you're dealing with an old home, um, it would be worth it to have it tested. Absolutely. Yeah. Lead and asbestos. And, and whether it's tested or not tested, when you do this kind of work, you should be wearing a face mask. Agreed. And so uh, you don't want to be breathing any of that stuff, whether it's whether it's asbestos or not. <laughs> I know. For you know, for a lot of years, I used to work out in my garage, and I'd be sanding away on whatever project I was working on. And I never wore any sort of mask. It didn't bother me. Right. And then sometime about 10 years ago, I could not stand sawdust. It absolutely murders me. Yeah. I have to wear a dust mask. Start getting a little asthmatic, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Getting old, I guess. I guess. You get enough sawdust boogers and uh, (laughs) you can develop (laughs) asthma. You inhale so much, you're just blowing logs out. Yep. <laughs> Toothpicks. Fire starter. Number two on the list is wallpaper borders. Oh, my. This is awesome because when people were using these wallpaper borders, they were about 12 inches tall. Yeah. Nine or six, 10 or 12 yeah, inches six, tall. Six to 12 inch. And uh, and they would put it up uh, at the ceiling level, right, right at the top of the wall under the ceiling. And this got wild. It could be anything. It could be anything Chickens. from stripes, roosters, to um, paisley, golf themes. Um, I mean, baseball. You name it. It could be sports. It could be animals. It could be little babies' faces. When I was in college, I worked at a place 
called Menards. Horses. You remember Menards? You probably don't know Menards. Actually, well, you even know the race car. Yeah, You're a racing yeah, fan. Absolutely, yeah. They're a Midwest company, Menards, and I worked in the paint and wall coverings department in co- during college. And w- that was one of our things. We had those borders that you could put up around the, the top or as a wainscoting. Yes. So you could put it mid-level. Yes, I saw it that way too many times in And, houses. oh my goodness, the catalog. I mean, you, like you said, anything under the sun, hockey, baseball, football, you know, oh, you're doing a kid's room? You got to put a border up. Yeah, ducks. Ducks, ducks. was a very popular <laughs> one. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, Fortunately, it came off pretty easy. Yeah. it uh, It's one of those things that definitely dates your house. I absolutely. Think. Oh, I agree. I'm definitely. Not not you think, you know. You know. You absolutely know. Especially if it was hearts. Hearts. Hearts and ducks. <laughs> Number three on the list is brass fixtures. Shiny brass. Handle sets and uh, other types of, you know, door pulls or drawer pulls. Yep. Yeah. Bright, door hardware. Bright, shiny brass. Later, they came out with an antique brass. Which is just as bad as bright brass. I agree. I I actually kind of like right now the matte, you know, the the satin brass or whatever they're calling it, the brushed brass. Yeah. I think it looks kind of cool. Do you? I mean, I actually like the brass color, but the bright brass that they were using back then was not brass color. I actually bought... It was more like yellow. I bought solid brass uh, handle sets for my house years ago that were anodized. Or they had a bronzing over the top of them, but as the bronzing scraped off, it it exposed that natural brass color underneath there, which is actually pretty cool looking. Hmm. I like it. Yeah, I do too. It's good. Good. All right, next one on the list is, uh, and this one's kind of funny, Tuscan and Mediterranean themes. That seemed like all the rage in the 90s. Yeah. Having the really dark granite with the really dark... Stained cupboards. wood. Yeah, stained dark cherry or brown. Yeah. You know, dark brown countertops. Lots of scroll work in the woodwork. Yeah. yeah. If you had a Tuscan kitchen in the 90s, you made it. Oh, yeah. Mediterranean themes. Very interesting. Neutral color palettes. Yeah, that's a, a little bit more today's day and age. You know, you'll see a lot of white, white yeah. cabinets. I feel like that's going to go out of style, though, at some point. I, yeah, I mean, I think that's just, it's just this big cyclical thing, you know, where it's uh, drama and less drama and more drama and less drama. You know, um, people started using black a lot. And now matte black is very popular, matte black. But the reason why matte black was not popular or very dark, dark um, hunter green and dark maroon, remember, uh, navy blue, mm-hmm. those dark colors were very popular during a time when dramatic coloring was popular and then that gave way to light natural airy you know earthy that kind of thing and then mm-hmm. i and know you know now people are going back to like black and white matte black and snowy white you know i mean it's a very interesting um <laughs> white on white on white yeah it's a very interesting that was trend my we painted our bedroom and my wife wanted white walls white trim white ceiling and I was a little shocked because I don't care for it. And but it, it, it turned out, or yeah, looks all right. Yeah, it's good. it's not just the same color white, you right? Know, well, you've shades got shades of yeah, white. Yeah, you got shades of white, and you get a little grayish in yeah, there. It is, yeah. It's, but it's like like a brighter even grayish can tinge. look white. It's got a tinge of as long as it's not against white. <laughs> that's, you yeah. don't want it to clash. Yeah, that's right. Just don't get any cream in there, and you'll be fine. Oh yeah, cream. Uh, next one on the list. <laughs> I love this one. This is my favorite one. Go ahead. Overly formal dining rooms. <laughs> overly formal. Where did you have you know, one of those growing up? Um, we did have an overly formal dining room, but it was in an addition to the house that was on the back. So that the original house stopped, and then you walked onto what was uh, an addition to the house, and so it was always a little cooler in that room, a little damper in that room. Um, all of the things inside that room were um, more flimsy. You know, the finishes inside the room were flimsy because it was it was an added-on room. Funny. And, it, and this house was built in 
uh, or nineteen late sixties, early seventies. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting room. It, but that was our formal, overly formal dining room. And um, you know, I mean, mom and dad always wanted to eat in there. <laughs> But nobody else wanted to be in there. We'd rather be in front of the TV or, right, you know, right, wherever. Right. But uh, we would end up back in that back room. It was all windows on one wall overlooking the back uh, yard. There was, was yeah, like a, a home design trend. You know, when they when they design homes, they had a specific room as the dining room. And now you don't see that. You don't see, like, right. this is the dining room No, right. Anymore. I mean, you almost don't see this is the kitchen anymore. Bare, yeah, basically. I mean, you walk in and you say, this is the great room. <laughs> yeah. There's the bathroom, the bedroom, the kitchen, <laughs> the living room, the family room, the dining room. It's all right there in one room. That's the open concept scenario. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake your world here. Are you? Tell me. I'm going to jump ahead because I've got this on here. And it is controversial, but open floor plans are... Going away. Going the way of the dodo bird, are they? Yeah, not the dodo bird, but, you know, the, you, COVID changed a lot of things, I think. Yeah. You know, when you had, there, there was all these houses at this time, you know, back in the 40s and 50s, houses were very compartmentalized. Yes. In the 1920s and 30s, it was like every door, every room had two doors. You know, it was like a door into, into a door and then it was closed and there was all these doors. Hallways and doors, you know, for everything. And then in the, what was it, probably the 2000s, everybody wanted to remove walls. They wanted to tear it down. Yeah. And just open it up. Open concept. Yep. Can we open this up? And and who's tired of hearing that word? Oh, yeah. Open concept. For sure. But you walk in. Yeah. You walk in to the main house and it's like kitchen, living room, dining area. You know, yeah, where's, everything. Where's my personal space yeah, at? Yeah, everything is just bam, right there. Yeah. And I re- recently noticed this because one of our friends just bought a new house. And we all went over there for a party. And they brought in catering. And they had this kitchen with this huge island. And they put all the catering on the island. And then 10 feet to the left was all the couches. And then 10 feet to the left was the dining area. And then 10 feet to the left of that was... Another area, <laughs> and there's not a wall in sight. Yeah. And there was probably 20, I don't know, 20 people in that whole house, and you couldn't hear yourself think. Like, it was so loud. You know, tall ceilings, nine or 10 foot ceilings in the house, and it was just echo, everything. You heard everything. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I have walked into open concept floor plans and they didn't put the toilet and the sink behind a wall Corey. they they built a screen and they stood a screen up in front of the toilet the toilet and the and the sink and the shower were all in the main room like in a loft like in a studio type room open concept studio and we're not talking about 700 square foot this was huge crazy they just you walk in there and i think it, I was watching this um, this this little show on TV, and it, there was an echo in the room. You walk into the room, and it echoes because there's nothing to knock down the yeah the reverberation. You know, well, like I said, since COVID, a lot of people went home and worked from home, and it just changed people. They want more privacy now. So when you're looking at newer, the newest house plans that are coming out from my customers that are getting built, have more rooms. They really do. You know, you still have these larger, great rooms because people like those, but there's also family rooms and areas that you can go and tuck away and get away from all that noise and all those people, which honestly, I prefer. I don't love that huge open concept. Yeah. So anyway. Very interesting. Next one on the list, Tony. This was one of my favorite things, actually. Accent walls. Accent walls. That was such a huge thing in the mid-2000s. Like 2005, 6, 7. Trading Spaces. Yeah. You remember that show? I do. Oh, I loved that show. That actually was a very cool... I knew people that were on that show. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was a very cool show. Um, they They did things on there that did not make good sense. For resale value of your home. Oh, 100%. No. I mean, you know, they covered the walls with sheets. 
<laughs> I saw it happen. It was uh, some wild stuff. But I definitely uh, remember accent walls. As a matter of fact, we definitely painted some accent walls in our last couple houses. Absolutely. You remember the sponge painting accent walls? Oh, or the, yeah. Even the leather. You remember the leather look where you'd take that special paint and then plaster or whatever, and you'd put it on the wall and a certain pattern, then you'd paint it like brown and it oh, looked no. like leather. I don't remember the leather, but I, mean, I definitely was... remember taking a sponge. Oh, yeah. And, and dab, sponging dab. it. Yeah, sponging the wall to put a... To put a special kind of texture, faux texture yep. on there. Yeah, that is very interesting. That's, that is so far out of style. That is gone. Absolutely gone. She gone. Uh, next one on the list, Tony. Matched furniture sets. Been there. <laughs> uh, we've both probably <laughs> yeah. been there. Yeah, I remember. You, yeah, my it, wife uses that term, matchy matchy. Yeah, she doesn't like things that are matchy yeah, a lot matchy. Of people don't like to matchy matchy these days, but we definitely did buy matched furniture sets. It was a very common thing. Here's the thing: back then, if you had mixed matched furniture, well, it's because you couldn't afford it, right? You know, you were one of them poors. Yeah, you were you were getting hand me downs or. Or uh, or whatever, but uh, you couldn't afford it. If, if you wanted to be, you know, if you wanted to be a status symbol, you needed to have matching furniture. Chair, love seat, couch, ottoman. That's yeah. How, that's how it was done. Bedroom set. Yep. And Everything matched. Yep, absolutely. Matchy, matchy. <laughs> Gone are the days. How it's, about this one, Tony? This one is, uh, I still see this one a lot. Not in new houses. It's gone. But I still see it a lot in houses for sale. Older homes. Older homes that are so probably more like the late 80s, 90s, but huge jacuzzi tubs. Oh, yeah. You know the ones that are on the platforms? Yeah, where you have to like- With the little two by two tiles. Every, to walk yeah. walk up to it to climb up on this giant box. Absolutely. Took up a ton of space in the in the bathroom. Yep. They've uh, They have been replaced. You know this because Absolutely. you just put one in. Yes. Soaker tub. Soaker tubs. That's really popular right now. And big, spacious walk-in showers. I would much rather have a shower that is a little bit bigger than to have this 200-gallon tub, you know what I mean, that you're never going to use. Right. Who uses those things? Well, I mean, if I'm being honest with you, <laughs> I, rented a, I rented a beach house that... Um, is an older, older beach house, you know, probably I would say early 2000s, probably oh, yeah, 20 yeah, uh -huh. years old. And there was a jacuzzi tub in the master bathroom. I ran a hot bath. I mean, you know, it's a hot bath is nice. The fact that it has jets or doesn't have jets doesn't really matter. Soaking in a hot tub is nice. I just said hot tub. <laughs> I mean, it really is what it is, right? Yeah. Those I mean, the hot tub. tubs were, were hot tubs. But man, you waste a lot of water. You got to fill them up yep. and then you drain it. Yep. That's absolutely true. That is true. It is it is wasteful. <laughs> it's crazy. All right. Last one on the list, Tony. And this actually probably makes number 13. Number we went from 13. 10 things to 13, but yeah, we kind of touched on this one, but faux finishes. Yeah. Sponge painting, rag rolling. Rag rolling. That's oh, what's yeah. the other one. Yes, I do remember rag rolling. I I had one. I saw one one time years ago when I worked at Menards. They had paint rollers with those textured foam things that you just picked out which one you wanted and you'd slide it on there and then you'd make the <laughs> really like a like coral reef. Roll stuff it like right that. on, huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, you know, so painting weird. walls, look, it doesn't matter what you're painting the walls with. Here's the here's the bottom line. If you own the home, you can have whatever you want on those walls because the people that you sell it to are going to paint over it. Yeah, that is the nice thing about paint, right? Yeah, paint is an easy thing to do. Everybody's capable and everybody has an opinion. And whatever it is that's on there, even if you just put it on brand new, it's probably going to get painted over. I agree. Because everybody's opinion is different, and um, and there's a thousand and one colors of paint out there, and it's really not that expensive. Not that difficult, not that expensive. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about what kind of paint you've got on the walls. Absolutely. Think, um, everything can get painted over. That's a great list. That yeah. takes me back. It makes me uh, think about a lot of... 
I mean, there's a lot the more than this, right? Come to pass over shag the years. carpet, you know. But shag, that's I had shag carpet in my house growing up. Yep, lime green shag carpet actually. <laughs> yeah, colored there's... appliances. All you know what was it avocado? Oh avocado yeah, avocado appliances. Avocado sink. Those things are kind of making a comeback too. Yeah, the old timey looking. Yeah, stuff. they're new. They're new right, right, right. appliances, but they look old. Right. They have that sort of uh, vintage vintage look to them. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I like the look. I do too. But there you go. I mean, if you have any on your mind, if you're listening to this and you say, oh, those guys totally forgot this one. Oh, yeah. Send it to us. Email it to us. Absolutely. Weekendwarriors at par.com. Yeah, That's we, P-A-R-R. Will, we will definitely talk about it on our next uh, podcast. Absolutely. Weekend Warriors. R.com, yep. P-A-R-R.com. Make sure you go subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash WW Home Show. And uh, at, at WW Home Show on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Have a great week. 